This is News Fighters, where we fight the news so you don't have to. Okay, welcome to News Fighters for today, Friday, August 23rd, 2019. I'm your host, Dylan Bain. Welcome to the big show. Now, apologies, my voice is still a bit hoarse. I've been yelling cheetah at the ashes every time it's come on the TV. It also hasn't been a big week in news, and you can tell because this made headlines on Channel 9. It's a kangaroo in Cairns. has shown visitors at a wildlife park how to have a lazy weekend. The Relax Roo was spotted yesterday at the Rainforest Station Nature Park near Cairns, basking in the tropical heat picking pieces of fruit off his belly. The video has resonated with many, clocking up more than 700,000 views online. Wow, 700,000 views online. Just think it's only 1.4 million views behind this viral video sensation. Uncle Mac is here. Today I'm going to show you how to easily unclog a toilet without using a plunger. Let's check it out. Woo-wee! had a curry last night. Yeah, over 2.1 million views for that amazing Aussie online video, but the sad part is Uncle Knackers actually won more Walkleys last year than anyone at Channel 9. Meanwhile, on to federal politics, and Prime Minister Scott Morrison was in Tuvalu for the Pacific Islands Forum last weekend, and it was all part of his... Pacific step up. If you're going to step up, you've got to show up. It's part of our step up, it's part of our showing up. When you step up, you have to show up, you have to turn up. Yes, it's the worst movie in the Step Up to the Streets movie franchise, Step Up to the Pacific Islands. So how did the Pacific Islands Forum go for our Prime Minister? Prime Minister Scott Morrison has refused to commit Australia to a pledge by our Pacific neighbours on climate change. The rift between Australia and Pacific Island nations over climate change has widened tonight after Fiji's Prime Minister launched an extraordinary attack on Prime Minister Scott Morrison. Frank Mbanimarama has accused him of insulting and condescending behaviour towards Pacific leaders. The leader of Tonga actually shed tears in front of the leaders. Yes, Australia made Tonga cry. Forget about being a good family member to the South Pacific countries. We're actually turning into the schoolyard bully. And I think you know what Tonga's reaction was. Fuck you, miss. Beg your pardon? I said fuck you with a P. Sorry about that. Had to be done. But just when you thought Australia couldn't get any more indifferent towards climate change... This happened. The Deputy Prime Minister Michael McCormack has been criticised for suggesting Pacific nations affected by climate change will survive partly because their workers can come to Australia to pick fruit. They'll continue to survive because uh, many of their workers come here and pick our fruit. And sadly, our visiting South Pacific seasonal workers don't get the best treatment when they're here. An inquiry into a modern slavery act has heard harrowing tales of exploitation of migrant workers in Australia. The people who pick our fruit and vegetables are at risk of slave-like conditions, with poor pay and dangerous, squalid housing. Three Tongans here on seasonal work have died on Australian farms in the past year. Yep, what a choice. Drown from climate change or be a slave. Thanks, Michael McCormack. So Scott Morrison was under fire for these comments and for pissing off all our South Pacific neighbours when it came to climate change. So the PM immediately went into damage control by attacking lefty activist group GetUp. Speaking at a Liberal Party conference in Adelaide, he launched an attack on political activist group GetUp and its conduct at the federal election. You know, this is no longer a wolf in sheep's clothing. GetUp is a wolf in wolf's clothing. Yeah, bad analogy, Scomo. I think a wolf in wolf's clothing would be pretty easy to spot. I mean, you'd be on the train and be like, why is there someone here in wolf's clothing? And wait a second, is that a wolf in there? Why is there a wolf dressed up like a wolf? What's the point of that? Bad costume choice, bro. Now, shifting topics for a second, Scott Morrison seemed to have a fascination with barnyard animals this week. Here he was talking about public servants or something, I'm not sure. My coach used to describe this difference as the bacon and eggs principle. The chicken is involved, but the pig is absolutely committed to the task. Hello, yes, Federal Police. I'd like to report some crimes against metaphors, please. And I'm, I'm a bit worried Scoma wants to fry up and eat some public servants. But back to get up, and I think Scott Morrison was taking a page out of Donald Trump's book here by attacking his enemies when he's under attack to distract everyone. And Scott Morrison really went after get up on everything he could think of. I mean, I thought their behaviour in the most recent election was disgraceful. It wasn't only the sort of misogynist attacks we saw here on Nicole Flint. Yes, GetUp did target Nicole Flint, who I believe is a woman, over her support for Peter Dutton and her climate change stance. But I, I wouldn't say that was as misogynistic as, say, 
Releasing a video of your mascot gyrating against a billboard of Zali Stegel. <laughs> Special gag for our YouTube viewers there. Yes, I was, of course, referring to Captain Getup, the postmodern and ironic mascot of Advance Australia, which is the conservative answer to Getup. And uh, he, was, he was a very interesting mascot. I, I think he actually had a breakdown during the election campaign. I'm Captain Getup, the Truth Crusader. Bill Shorten is my father. What's going on? What's happening? <laughs> there, there, Captain Getup. Cheer up. Don't worry. There'll be other gig economy voiceover gigs on Fiverr.com for you to do in the future, I promise. Back to Scott Morrison, and he really did appear to be uh, clutching at straws in his attempts to demonise Get Up. Uh, but the uh, the pillaring of the Surf Lifesaving Association and taking um, surfing um, rescues, as, seeing it as some sort of sort of light entertainment. Ah, so maybe you remember the online comedy ad from the election campaign that he's referring to here. Let's let's check back and see well, what was its target again. Tony, someone's drowning. Ah. Uh. Look, I think you'll find that the science isn't settled on that. Now, I don't pretend to be an expert in satire here, but I'm pretty sure that that ad was pillaring and ridiculing Tony Abbott's disbelief at climate change science, not the Surf Life Saving Association. I mean, it would be fair enough if Scott Morrison said he hated the Baywatch movie for pillaring lifesavers. I mean, everyone hated the Baywatch movie, even Dwayne The Rock Johnson, who was in it. Look, made Baywatch with the best of intentions. It didn't work out like that. The movie was so bad. So yes, yeah, Scott Morrison, please continue with the get up hate. Uh, wh what else could they be responsible for? And frankly, the way they engaged in the at in the attacks on Josh Frydenberg, and, and now we're seeing anti-Semitic attacks on Josh Frydenberg. Wow, very strong language against Get Up there from Scott Morrison. In fact, way stronger than the language he used against former One Nation Senator Fraser Anning when he attended a march with actual Nazis at it in January. Today, the Prime Minister weighed in, describing it as an ugly racial protest, saying intolerance does not make Australia stronger. While he stopped short of condemning the involvement for the Queensland crossbencher. And if Scott Morrison is referring to the current Section 44 citizenship challenge against Josh Frydenberg, well, Get Up condemned it, leaving Chris Kenny to have to say this. Paul Oosting, National Director of Get Up, of all people, put it best this week when he said, the challenge against Josh Frydenberg on the grounds of dual citizenship is beyond offensive and we condemn it. Yes, Sky News' Chris Kenny there agreeing with Get Up, and I believe the weather forecast for tomorrow is hell freezing over. So the conclusion of Scott Morrison's meandering, exaggerated and inaccurate argument against Get Up is that it should just become a political party. You know, get up, have to be accountable for what they say and do. They want to be in the political space, fine. Call yourself a political party. You're against the Liberal Party. We get that. That's OK. There's no problem with that. Says the man who called up the ABC and got a chaser stunt pulled off air in 2013. There's a huge irony in ScoMo wanting Get Up to become a political party. Because if they were a political party, then they'd legally be allowed to lie. And there's no requirement for political ads to be truthful. Broadly speaking, um, truth misleadingness isn't isn't covered by the election laws. Yeah, and I mean, heaven forbid they might even try and get away with the kind of stuff the Liberal Party did at the last election. Vote Labor and a retiree tax is on the horizon. Death tax. Death tax. Death taxes. Labor. It's the bill Australia can't afford. Recently, some South Sydney residents woke to find this pamphlet in their mailboxes. Written in Chinese, Arabic and English, it claims a vote for Labor would make children become homosexual and result in them learning how to masturbate at school. Well, I mean, who remembers any other skill they picked up in high school, let's be honest. I'm not using trigonometry twice a week, that's for sure. So while Get Up has had to pull ads because they're in poor taste, they've never been accused of being mistruthful or lying. Unlike Get Up's conservative equivalent, Advance Australia, which got in big trouble for this ad about independent Zali Stegel. Zali Stegel has a secret. She's not really independent. It's directly false. It's completely directly opposite my stated position at every turn. So given that, it's a bit hypocritical of Scott Morrison to single out Get Up for being the wolf in wolf's clothing while ignoring Advance Australia for being so blatantly partisan and misleading. As a Guardian's Lenore Taylor pointed out on Insiders. I mean, it's like the Liberals can't work out whether they want to crush Get Up or emulate them. Yes, and if the government cracks down on non-partisan political organisations, that will mean less freedom of speech and it will mean a democracy without a voice 
for issues-based activism, and a lot more spare time for ageing grey-haired lefties who feel guilty about owning a three-bedroom home in the city. But worst of all, it'll mean no more gig economy Fiverr.com voiceover work for the guy who plays Captain GetUp. Bill Shorten is my father. What's going on? What's happening? So, what can be done? Well... I jumped on Fiverr.com and hired my own amateurish gig economy voiceover guy to try and convince Scott Morrison and the Liberals to leave GetUp and other activist political organisations alone. Check it out. I'm Captain Advance Australia. Scott Morrison is my father. If you attack political organisations like GetUp, you are basically trying to silence opponents. Nobody wants that because then you won't get wacky videos at the next election from me or Captain Get Up. Bill Shorten is my father. Shut up, Captain Get Up. So that is Como. Next time you are under attack from world leaders for loving coal, maybe think about taking climate change seriously instead of lashing out at organizations you simply don't like and looking like a cut-rate Donald Trump impersonator because nobody likes bad imitations of things that were bad to begin with. I'm Captain Advance Australia. Okay, that's News Fighters for today. It's written and presented by me, Dylan Bain. Thanks for listening. If you've enjoyed the show, tell your friends. Subscribe. Do a funny dance. I don't care. We're on Facebook, but I hate Facebook, so don't like it. Thanks for tuning in. Keep fighting and bye for now. This is News Fighters. Where we fight the news so you don't have to.